The Maryfield Garden Center proudly presents Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, bringing you expert help in creating the perfect garden. Your host, Debbie Warhurst-Cap, and gardening specialist, Peg Beer, explore the world of year-round landscaping and planting. Visit the Maryfield Garden Center nearest you. You'll find a courteous and knowledgeable staff and the best selection of bulbs, plants, shrubs, and trees. And now, Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. Hello everybody, hope you're having a great weekend so far and we are so glad you're joining us today because we've got a really good show for you today. It's going to be a nice weekend. We talked about containers last week and we're going to continue that a little bit. Well, containers, those, these beautiful plants that we're going to talk about today in containers but also in the ground mm -hmm. and, and they're fun plants. Mm -hmm. And small spaces. Yes. In a couple of small spaces. And As a matter of fact, as sort of a heads up, mm -hmm. before we get into the program, let's bring up the first slide and, and tell you how I really, really got caught up in all of this. Wow. This is a garden that is beside the road, and it's a little bit enclosed because there's a border that actually lines or faces the road. And one day, many years ago, I got into the Hypertufa mm -hmm. containers, plus other complementary low-growing containers, and began to grow some of these beautiful plants as they became popular mm -hmm. in those containers. And then I spread out and I went into the ground with <laughs> them. And and each year I seemed to sort of add to it a mm -hmm. bit, you know. And I've so, watched that over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we've filmed there quite a bit. And so it does change. And, and you've seen in the past, and perhaps we'll see again, um, summertime, the little waterfall that I built in that same area. Mm -hmm. so, and so it has become the fairy garden. And everybody enjoys it. Right. It's a conversation piece. It's a pleasure. And we're going to talk about some of that today. Primarily, we're going to concentrate on the plants themselves because they have special needs. Drainage is one of them and um, and they're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So small so containers, beautiful. small areas for big impact though. That's right, but you can see from my own garden that these small areas can be within a large mm -hmm. area. Absolutely. Okay. So a lot going on today and then later on of course we'll take your phone calls so stay tuned for that as well. So before we get started, I want to give you a couple of uh, tidbits of what we're, what's going on at Maryfield Garden Center. Our seminars are continuing, but they're, they're winding down, so be sure to take advantage of these. Today at our Maryfield location, uh, Linda Brining is going to be talking about the, uh, I'm sorry, at the Gainesville location. Okay. At the Gainesville location, sorry. Uh, Linda Brining is going to be talking about the magic of miniature gardens. Guess what? Wow. <laughs> so this will kind of lead you in. Yes, and Linda <laughs> loves it, and she's so into it, mm -hmm. and she, of course, will do all of the how-to and so forth. So if you're in that area and you can make that particular one, mm -hmm. it ties totally with what we're doing That's today. Right. And what, the nice thing is you don't have to choose between your seminars no. now. <laughs> we've got the one seminar today. It's at 10 a.m., right. and then we've got, that, again, at, at the Gainesville location as well as tomorrow's, which is how to be a successful gardener. Now, this one is very <laughs> special to me. My dad, Bob Warhurst, is going to be doing this. And, you know, he has really made a study the last several years. I mean, he has years and years of experience. He's been going out to people's houses. He's been really seeing what's happening and, and really learned what works, the best way to plant, the best way to water, and he wants to share that with you. Well, it's all about success. Mm -hmm. and. And we want everybody to succeed. We want what we plant to work, okay? Right. You want to choose the right plant for the place, make the right preparations in the planting mm -hmm. it, but then the key is really watering. You know, Absolutely. after you've made those other good choices, mm -hmm. watering, and he's stressing that because he sees a lot of circumstances where it's either overwatered or underwater mm -hmm. and and it's not terribly hard right. to do that happy medium mm -hmm. which is what's required to to have uh, plants work so yeah he's going to share all those tips right well and then next week of course we've got great seminars as well and that will be the last set of this series so 
definitely, definitely take care, take advantage of that. Now, Andre Viet's going to be here next Saturday. Now, this seminar is going to be at a different time. It's at yes. 1.30 in the afternoon rather than the 10 a.m. that our Saturday mm -hmm. sessions usually are. And that's because he does his radio show in the that, morning. That's right. So that, that is going to be a wonderful, wonderful seminar on the exciting world of, of perennials. So take advantage of that. And our last one will be Growing Beautiful Roses. Paul McLean is going to give, do a great job on that. It's just, you know, roses are, have really made a, a great comeback, which I'm so excited yes, about. Well, All the they're, new varieties. They're different. They're not yeah. as demanding. They are not. Yes. And, and they are so wonderful. You know, yeah. Rob's made a rose garden beside our house. And to be able to just grab those roses, cut them, and bring them in and have them in the house all summer long is just is just wonderful. So that will be on Sunday. Speaking of roses, I do want to mention, you know, we just got our roses in, our potted roses in. So we're excited about that. And our friends at the Arlington Rose Foundation are going to be at our Fair Oaks location today. Get our locations all okay. together. Be at our Fair Oaks location today from 11 to 3 and tomorrow from 11 to 3. So take advantage of that. They have a world of experience on roses. They can tell you all about the varieties, all about the care, and uh, it's just a great, great group. So right. that's super. And one more, I do want to mention, we've got a couple of big things going on this week just in general, not we, but it's uh, Earth Day this week and Arbor Day this week. So both of those are great opportunities. If you, if you need an excuse to go plant something and add something <laughs> to your landscape, what better excuse than to, to, to help the environment? Right. So, and then, oh, Administrative Professionals Day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you need appreciate to, our people. That's right. <laughs> You've got beautiful potted yes. plants, and even at our Gainesville and Fair Oaks locations, cut flowers. So, yeah. you know, again, if you need an excuse to get something beautiful, come on Say, in. Thank you never you. need an excuse, but <laughs> <laughs> they're there if you need them. Right. <laughs> okay, I think that's all the, the uh, announcements I've got. All right. Well, we do have a lot going on, mm -hmm. and, and I do have. Um, a video to share with you as last week we did uh was it last week Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Armitage. <laughs> but we did have Dr. Armitage. Uh, we've taken advantage of this man's expertise while he was here uh, maybe six weeks ago mm -hmm. and he was um, in Baltimore above Baltimore um, in the fall and we did some filming there. This is a man who is just a wealth of knowledge. He's a professor at the University of Georgia. He has taught for many years. He's planted his own gardens. Mm -hmm. He's done a lot of research and a lot of traveling and lecturing. And, and it's good that we were able to get him to stand still long enough. <laughs> he is to, full of energy, that to is do for some sure. <laughs> videos. But the incredible thing about this man is, and I think you can gather that mm -hmm. from the short clips of these short videos, he loves to garden. So let's bring that video up of Dr. Alan Armitage. Okay. It's here just to talk about gardening and a great group of plants. I love this stuff. I love getting outside. I love getting dirty. I love getting exhausted after a great day's work in a garden. But mostly, I love working with plants and discovering new ways to use them. One of, the, one of the great new programs out there is this program called Treadwell. And Treadwell's is essentially a program where you have plants that can grow on the path. Heck, you can even walk on them. Beside the path, near the path, near a pond. Plants that aren't going to get out of hand. And look behind me. Look at this gorgeous yellow sedum, Angelina. Just one of the many, many Treadwell plants. Over a hundred of them. You know, there's yellows. There's plants like Grace Ward, which is probably about the most fabulous blue you're ever going to find. And even ice plants in fuchsia and pink and white. you got to love this program. It's giving us plants to use for a special use in special areas. It's Treadwell. Let's go with it. Hi, I'm David Yost from Maryfield Garden Center. And nothing beats the taste of fresh homegrown herbs, vegetables, fruits and berries. And whether it's a backyard orchard or growing herbs in a container, we have everything you need for your garden. And if you're new to gardening or new to growing edibles, our experts will be happy to coach you on a bountiful harvest. So come into Maryfield Garden Center today and let's get started.
Hey, phone, give me the best pizza in this area. I found 20 paisanos near you. Now give me the best calzones in this area. I found 20 paisanos near you. Okay, what about subs in this area? Don't you understand? I found 20 paisanos near you. I think I need a salad too. Enough already. Go to paisanos. Paisanos it is. Rated best pizza in DC, Maryland, and Virginia by WTOP listeners. Paisanos, not just pizza, but something for everyone. At Complete Service Inspections of Virginia, we cover it all. Using our high-power technology, we find small problems in your home before they become big headaches. Now's the time that pests wake up with a big appetite. Termites will begin to swarm, and CSI has the solution. Termites and other pests can't hide from our infrared and acoustic technology. Call now and get our termite control special, a free inspection, and $100 off any treatment. But hurry, this offer won't last. Just because you don't see termites doesn't mean they're not there. Call 866-996-4CSI today for our termite control specials while they last. House plants add warmth and beauty to your home and office. And at Merrifield Garden Center, you'll find an incredible selection of gorgeous indoor plants to brighten every room. Our greenhouses are filled with lush tropicals, colorful varieties, and unique specimens. So visit Merrifield Garden Center today and discover the difference beautiful house plants can make. Hey everybody, welcome back to Maryfield's Gardening Advisor. I'm here by myself because Peggy is over in our virtual garden and she's got lots to share with you. Peg? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. And I, I'm so thankful for, for that Dr. Alan Armitage doing some of those videos because you will see some of those plants. That's a branded name and there are others which we're going to talk about a little bit more in the program. But um, a lot of those Treadwell plants have been used in the containers and in the ground of that at my house and elsewhere, you know. Here is one of the first container gardens and it's a big one, okay, it has a lot of impact. And the one of the original houses that I used in that garden. And so the little dwarf evergreens, or not evergreens in some instance, have had an opportunity to grow in. For instance, the little dwarf cotoneaster here now has been in for a number of years. And every spring, I've just gone out recently and done quite a bit of pruning on this to keep it within its shape. These things, because they're in containers, are somewhat bonsai, shall we say. Behind that is a dwarf barberry, but one that flows out. And likewise, I've trimmed it pretty heavily. There is a little upright barberry here, and the little cushion of the dwarf hanoki cypress. Out from that is a miniature grass, one of the little carex. Here is a small, uh, the, the dwarf form of a hardy geranium. And on this area here, you get those wonderful things like creeping thyme and a scotch and Irish moss, which takes the place of the lawn that you don't have to mow. And guess what? It's where the fairies are playing. But I've, there's been so much pleasure in these little gardens, and they change somewhat. Yes, you'll lose a plant every now and then, and you'll put in something else, but that's the way it goes. Let's keep going, please. All right, this is a little container that's next to that, with, again, a little tiny house situated in the back. The little evergreens, these are upright ones that I have sheared to, again, keep them in bounds. They're all dwarf forms, but even the dwarf forms, when you give them a happy environment, they do grow and they can be sheared. Here again is the repetition of the little dwarf Hinoki cypress and wonderful um, other perennials that can be tucked among these things and this is Coriadalis lutea. That one happens to be growing in the ground between these containers and so you've got a combination of things going on here. But look at this wonderful, <coughs> excuse me, little area here where the time's creeping over the edge. Let's continue please. Pratia in bloom and the little fairies down among it. 
the next one, please. <coughs> a grouping of plants. And some are on pedestals so that they are at different varying heights. You've got the gray forms of some of the little plants, the gold forms, and some wonderful repetition going on. Next one. Accents from the greenhouse. <coughs> I've got something in my throat. The little cactus give you a bright spot in that area with other little dwarf forms of things. Thank I'm you, Debbie. I'm going to sneak right on here and give you, give you a, <laughs> something to drink. Thank you. We have a lot of different little plants that are evergreen, but that flower also. And then you can see gravel among this. They require excellent drainage. And so I top all of this off with a very fine gravel. Actually, it happens to be the red Seminole chips because I like the color, okay? And that is also used in the pathways that I create. Let's go to the next one. This is all in ground here. All of this in section that you're seeing right now is planted in ground, which you saw in that first picture. So let's continue with another one. Now we're back to a smaller uh, hypertufa garden. And I've changed the elevation here within that container by the use of little stacking stones and a tiny little house, a little patio. This is a wonderful sedum. It's very golden. I like the tones and color contrasts within these containers as much as I do in the ground because that's very important. Here is a bluish gray sedum that's cascading over the side. There's a little chair and table down front, okay. And a little dwarf spruce. I've got arbors in the back. Incredible plantings, really. So I think we're going to take a break for the moment. I'm going to get my voice back. And we're going to come back to these gardens and enjoy what I have enjoyed so much. So we'll be back in a moment. At Merrifield Garden Center, you'll find everything for a beautiful landscape. Merrifield has an amazing array of gorgeous plants and gardening accessories, from a wide selection of trees and shrubs to a fantastic collection of annuals, perennials, and container gardens in more colors, textures, and varieties than ever before, plus greenhouses full of tropical delights. And our plant specialists are ready to help with design assistance and the answers to any of your gardening questions. So visit Merrifield Garden Center today and enjoy all the color and beauty of the season. This time of year means working on the lawn, enjoying the boat, or riding a motorcycle. But you can't start your fun if you can't start your engine. At Batteries Plus, we can test your batteries to make sure they're ready. If you need a battery, we have a wide selection for boats, ATVs, riding toys, motorcycles, riding mowers, and more. So stop into Batteries Plus to make sure the fun keeps starting all season long. Batteries Plus. Get what you need. Hey, they're coming. Yeah, British. Later. Sorry. Okay. Um, words. Scarecrow and Baboon. Monkey. Pot Stew Saturday. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, how happy are folks who save hundreds of dollars switching to Geico? Happier than Paul Revere with a cell phone? Why not? Get happy. Get Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Hi, I'm David Yost from Maryfield Garden Center. And nothing beats the taste of fresh, homegrown herbs, vegetables, fruits, and berries. And whether it's a backyard orchard or growing herbs in a container, we have everything you need for your garden. And if you're new to gardening or new to growing edibles, our experts will be happy to coach you on a bountiful harvest. So come into Maryfield Garden Center today and let's get started.
Welcome back to Maryfield Gardening Advisor. My enthusiasm isn't damp. The voice just was for a moment. So hopefully it's back, okay? And we're talking about wonderful dwarf or miniature plants that have been planted in containers, whether they be hypertufa, which is a Portland cement with a mixture of peat moss and et cetera. And it's a very earthy looking. But I also enjoy contrasts, and I frequently will use low pots of ceramic or clay or even wood. And so you're not really limited only by your imagination. In this round container, there's a grouping of sedums. Having different things in all of these containers it was, is what makes it so interesting. Here we have hens and chicks, lots of different colors of hens and chicks, and they'll cascade over. I've got lots of babies around my hens and chicks now that I kind of take off and put in other containers. So it's an evolving thing. Here is a little sprucy looking sedum angelinia and it's golden and contrasts so well with the other tones of green that are in here and still other types of sedum that are cascading out of there. Now this is at the edge where there's a huge um, Japanese maple, the cascading variety, and it just looks very at home there. So let's go through some of the other pictures that we have to share. This is a closer view of that area that I told you that I planted beside the road. And most of this is all planted in ground. And that's why a lot of these little plants are called tread wells or steppables. There are different names from the different companies, all similar plants, all used in a similar fashion. Again, this is an area that is complemented by a, an upright growing Japanese maple and the soil is mounded. Drainage is very important. It's good, but it has a good mixture of uh, small stones in it so that the drainage is perfect. And then there's an undulation here of the different plants, which makes it very interesting. The little dwarf evergreens, whether it's dwarf hemlock or the Honoki cypress, there are creeping times that you see down in this area. Some of the other little plants, like the geraniums or the pratia that come up in mounds, and then faced off by um, the little dwarf acorus and the dwarf forms of uh, the Irish moss, okay? Across from that is another smaller garden and a lot of the containers that you saw. Let's continue, please. Here is a better view and I have a little walkway in between here which goes back to actually the little fountain that is in the back of the little waterfall. Here is the dwarf a chorus. It only gets three or four inches tall and this will become a complete mound. And yes, you can tread on it a little bit. You don't walk on it all the time, but you can tread on it, okay? Next one, please. Other types of plants. You see the interest that's here when you've got different forms of plants and you've got different colors of plants. And it doesn't require a lot of work. Yes, there's a little weeding because weeds will blow in on top of that gravel every now and then, but it's not so bad. And you know one other nice thing about this type of, of planting? It can be grown in an elevated situation. Let's face it, this, uh, there are times when we can't get down on our knees and it's nice to have something small that you can enjoy in an upright situation. So let's continue. Is there another one coming up? No, nope. have I reached the last of them? There we go, I knew there were more. Look at these dwarf Hinoki cypress. There are, there's a Hinoki cypress out there for everybody and every need. There are 
tall, nice big ones, there's intermediate sizes, and then there's the little babies. And even these little babies can be trimmed. You just shear the little edges, and now's a good time to do that. Here's a dwarf hemlock. And, and look at these little things climbing through uh, and among the rocks. I really do enjoy it. And here's a, a little mushroom back here. There's a fairy over here. And there are other houses in the back. It's fun. It's like Dr. Armitage says, to get out there and have fun. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, got another one. There we go, there we go. Okay. At the Fair Oaks location, we've been heavily into these fairy gardens, these small miniature gardens for a long time. And so there are a lot of them. Yes, a lot for sale, but a lot for display purposes too. Because sometimes we need ideas is how to create these things. And, and it doesn't have to be on a flat elevation. It can be mounded within it. And so you just mound up that gravelly soil that drains well and use beautiful stones to give you interest. And yes, some of these plants will grow over some of those stones. But, but look at the fun little things that are in, in bloom here. Here's a lovely blue one back here in a little house. And, and, and again, the cascading um, creeping plants, whether it's thyme or the mosses. This is a golden sedum. And it picks up the color of the new foliage of, guess what, isn't this interesting? Look at the trunk of that little Japanese maple. It's a dwarf Japanese maple that has been planted into the back. But you know, I, I have some little seedlings because some of these Japanese maples love to drop their seeds and they start up nicely. And I'm going to use some of those in my containers and they can be trimmed for a very long time. And when you're tired of it take it out you know okay let's continue please look at the combinations and the varieties of sedum and hens and chicks that are available look at the color tones within them so I do enjoy having containers with just these plants in them. And I believe there's a couple of more pictures. We have two more pictures. Let's run through those. Okay. I did want to share with you because the children in all of us love, love this garden. Ramiro and a, a number of the people actually at the Fair Oaks location created this and here again this is a classic example of how you can bring the garden up to you. They built a garden that's probably about three and a half feet tall. They put a train into that garden and we all enjoy it so much. But look look how interested they are. You have created a landscape with just these dwarf plants. I believe there's one more picture of that. Isn't that fun? Here, here's the little conical spruce. And here again, don't be afraid to shear these plants. Perfect time to do it, okay? And if you need to, you can do it again in June, okay? Wonderful little bridges. I, we have the most exciting um, accessories this year. A lot of them are, I know at Fair Oaks, in our, in our greenhouse. Some are outside, but most of them are in, in the greenhouse. Different types of fairies, different types of houses, lots of furniture. And this is what makes these gardens such fun. Use your imagination, but come and use our imagination too, because we love it. We'll be back in a moment and we'll talk a little bit more about some of these individual plants and what they can do for you. Car trouble causing you headaches? Can't figure out what's happening under the hood? Tune into an expert who knows about tune-ups and more. I'm Pat Goss and I've got all your toughest car questions covered. 
Spending a little time with me could save you big bucks. So if you're searching for auto advice you can trust, don't drive yourself crazy. Pull into Goss's Garage with host Pat Goss. Live Saturday mornings at 9.30, only on News Channel 8. We're not going to take it. Next, all new Katie. The solutions to everything that drives you crazy, from household chores to parenting, even sex. I thought the show was going to get very racist. Join me Monday at 4 on ABC7. All new Sunday. You really are as dark as people say. As Storybrook battles to control magic, there will be suffering. A brand new hero arrives. He goes by Robin Hood. Once upon a time, all new Sunday at 8, 7 central on ABC. Enjoy outdoor living at its finest. At Merrifield Garden Center, our talented designers can create an outdoor living space so beautiful, you'll never want to leave home. Whether it's entertaining family and friends on the patio or relaxing by the pool, Merrifield Garden Center can design the landscape of your dreams. From custom designs to distinctive walkways, outdoor kitchens, fireplaces, and more, the possibilities are endless. So contact Merrifield Garden Center today and enjoy the beauty of your landscape. This time of year means working on the lawn, enjoying the boat, or riding a motorcycle. But you can't start your fun if you can't start your engine. At Batteries Plus, we can test your batteries to make sure they're ready. If you need a battery, we have a wide selection for boats, ATVs, riding toys, motorcycles, riding mowers, and more. So stop into Batteries Plus to make sure the fun keeps starting all season long. Batteries Plus. Get what you need. You're watching News Channel 8. At Merrifield Garden Center, you'll find everything for a beautiful landscape. Merrifield has an amazing array of gorgeous plants and gardening accessories, from a wide selection of trees and shrubs, to a fantastic collection of annuals, perennials, and container gardens, in more colors, textures, and varieties than ever before, plus greenhouses full of tropical delights. And our plant specialists are ready to help with design assistance and the answers to any of your gardening questions. So visit Merrifield Garden Center today and enjoy all the color and beauty of the season. Fairies everywhere. <laughs> well, I loved seeing those pictures, but I hope everybody realizes those are miniature gardens. Because when you were standing yeah. next to them, I mean, it, it looked like a reg could be a regular garden. Right. But it, it's just great fun, and I do want to share a few of these plants. There's no way I can share all of them because right. there's so many, and they're so delightful. You know, it, they just are. I, I think I've enjoyed this garden more than any oh, yeah. other. You mm -hmm. know, it's just. And I think so your neighbors creative. have as well. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Okay, uh, we have another short video with uh, Dr. Alan Armitage yes. um, on the on the treadwheels. I believe it is. Yes, so he wants mm -hmm. to talk to you about um, this particular line of plant, which is called treadwell. Okay, uh, I'll snitch one from here, mm -hmm. and and has a tag on it, which we're going to talk about after his video. So let's bring his video up. Yay, Dr. Alan Armitage here. And, and you know, life can get complicated. Gardening is simple. Sometimes we make this thing so complicated we don't even know which plant to buy. We have so many choices, we don't know which choice to make. Let's be simple. Let's get some plants that work for a reason. This Treadwell program, I think is terrific. There are, there are plants that are low growing. They are designed to be around paths, in paths, at the side of a path, or in a rock garden. They're just magnificent, tough, colorful plants. They're no brainers, they're simple. When you see a Treadwell sign, put them in the garden, it's spades, it's fabulous. So let's get uncomplicated. We even get a sign that you can take a scan on your phone and you get a 20 second video that says how to use this plant and what's good about it. It can't get much simpler than that. So, I'm tired of complicated. Let's go gardening. Let's get our fingers dirty. Let's go get some treadwell. Let's go gardening. I like that. And the fingers are frequently <laughs> dirty. <That's but> right. <laughs> fortunately, I travel in circles where <laughs> most everybody else like is, is also, you know. <laughs> And, and it's fun because um, Dr. Armitage was at this wonderful supplier's. We are so blessed. Well, we worked at it, you know, having great suppliers. And Treadwell is 
one name that they have coined because you can occasionally walk on these plants. And, uh, and his enthusiasm is just tremendous. Now, what he was telling you about is on the Treadwell plants, the ones that have this little card in them, you can scan it mm -hmm. and Get it one of those will codes talk there. to you, yes. Now, so have, have I done like, this? Yes. <laughs> no, my phone isn't smart. <laughs> Well, you are, so that's good. Okay. <laughs> I can talk to you about this, too. That's right. <laughs> but it, it's kind of fun. It's something very, very new. And all of you who okay, have yeah, the, the coach smart... This is the talking yeah, about there. Yeah. <laughs> all of you who have the smartphones will know how to do that, mm -hmm. okay? And I apologize for not having borrowed a phone and right. tried it, you know? <laughs> but you will find other uh, different tags in plants that are very similar, okay? Some of them will be called steppables, some aren't called anything, jeepers, creepers. some are called mm -hmm. jeepers creepers. They're all similar plants and in my hand are two incredibly interesting plants that I suggest that you all include in your garden. One is a dwarf coral bells. The leaves are beautiful on these plants, but they bloom, which is also fun. And then this is a dwarf geranium, hardy geranium, okay? Wonderful, exciting plants. Then we get into uh, another one that's oh. just simply labeled the fairy. Pink, the pink pot, okay. how cute. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? <laughs> and this is a little dwarf armeria. And Deb, can you reach that particular this plant? Mm -hmm. When I say that this is a dwarf armeria, you see the foliage, it stays small. But this is what happens. It shoots up the little blooms. And if you deadhead, it will bloom for most of the summer. And it's some, That's somewhat great. evergreen mm -hmm. too. This one happens to be a Jeepers Creepers. This is an armeria and it's labeled fairy, okay? So it doesn't really matter. They're all gorgeous right. plants, mm -hmm. you know, just beautiful. And here's another. I'm probably going to mess up this display in the front, but that's all right. <laughs> another little Carl Bells and, and a little fairy. Just happen to have a little fairy Adam. hiding in it there. <laughs> These little fairies are so, so sweet. But there are other little types of fairies available also, and they're just part of that garden, you know? That's great. Um, these are the creeping times. There's different ones. There's a gray one. Here's a beautiful, beautiful gray one. Okay. And before we leave this uh, particular segment, mm -hmm. I've got to tell you about um, a group of plants that isn't really included in this Steppable, credible line. Mm -hmm. They're called ephemerals, which means that they come up in the spring mm -hmm. and then they disappear over the summer. So you have to remember where they are and not dig into them. But they are our wildflowers. Mm -hmm. They are our native flowers. And this is the time of year to buy them and to put them in, whether it's trillium or some of that kind of plant. But I've always loved this one. It's called Uvularia, or some people call it bellwort. Some people call it the little fairy flower because it is, it's such fun. Now, it will get taller, taller than this when it's established, and it has, at this time of the year, the most golden little um, flowers that come down from it. But these are native plants. You need to buy them now. Come into the garden center. I know that Romero at Fair Oaks has a wonderful display of these grouped together. They are natives, and this is the time to do it. Great. Okay, okay we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, you'll, we'll take your phone call. So if you have any questions, please give us a call, 703-387-1046, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. is Merrifield time and at Merrifield Garden Center you'll find everything to make your garden spring to life with the color and beauty of the season. New shipments are arriving daily. 
filled with the finest quality plants from the country's top growers. And our horticulturists and plant specialists are ready to help with creative design assistance and any of your gardening questions. So stop by and see us in Merrifield, Fairfax, and Gainesville, Virginia, and enjoy all the beauty of spring. Hey, phone, give me the best pizza in this area. I found 20 Paisanos near you. Now give me the best calzones in this area. I found 20 Paisanos near you. Okay, what about subs in this area? Don't you understand? I found 20 Paisanos near you. I think I need a salad, too. Enough already. Go to Paisanos. Paisanos it is. Rated best pizza in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia by WTOP listeners. Paisanos, not just pizza, but something for everyone. At Complete Service Inspections of Virginia, we cover it all. Using our high-power technology, we find small problems in your home before they become big headaches. Now's the time that pests wake up with a big appetite. Termites will begin to swarm, and CSI has the solution. Termites and other pests can't hide from our infrared and acoustic technology. Call now and get our termite control special, a free inspection, and $100 off any treatment. But hurry, this offer won't last. Just because you don't see termites doesn't mean they're not there. Call 866-996-4CSI today for our termite control specials while they last. Enjoy outdoor living at its finest. At Merrifield Garden Center, our talented designers can create an outdoor living space so beautiful, you'll never want to leave home. Whether it's entertaining family and friends on the patio or relaxing by the pool, Merrifield Garden Center can design the landscape of your dreams. From custom designs to distinctive walkways, outdoor kitchens, fireplaces, and more, the possibilities are endless. So contact Merrifield Garden Center today and enjoy the beauty of your landscape. everybody, welcome back. It's phone call time, 703-387-1046. But we want to take just a minute, because we ran out of time, you wanted to mention yes, something about it, the drainage. It's so important, mm -hmm. and what we did today was cover plants more than how-to, mm -hmm. and I really don't have a lot of time to do the how-to, but as I mentioned to you earlier, drainage is incredibly important with almost everything, but particularly with these plants. And so into that good soil, I mixed, you can use different types of gravel, um, the permatil or vole block is mm -hmm. what some people call it, is a right. sharp exploded slate. And I don't have that bag, right. but it is incredible. It's wonderful. And I do a one third additive of this, whether it's in the container or in the ground, mixed with good topsoil in the ground situation and good potting soil in the other situation. Mm -hmm. So it's important to get that right. And into all of that with the fertilization, I really, really enjoy using the natural stuff. And I have been using garden gypsum. This is an Espoma product. I've been using garden gypsum, which is calcium mm -hmm. and necessary for the plants according to the directions and the size of your container or in the ground. Rock phosphate. This is not the problem washing away because it's the natural rock phosphate and it is fantastic for root growth. Uh, green sand, which Andreviat really got me into using mm -hmm. a long time ago, a very natural product. What does it do? I have the vaguest idea, but I use it anyway, okay, because he said to. <laughs> Works. Plantone. This is a mixture of things. Again, according to the directions, I work it into all of the containers that I do, whether it's these or others. And at this time of the year, going back to the older containers, I will sprinkle all of this in and work it just wherever I can, right. okay? Mm -hmm. Whether it's in the ground or in the containers. And so, fertilization is very important. And the one nice thing about these, these areas is yes they do require water but in the summertime they don't require as much water as a lot of other containers and things and so i can let it slide a little all bit. right <laughs> well peg we do have a caller on the line i believe is it mary yeah. good morning mary um good morning how are you good, good thank you um the problem i have is with my encore azalea bushes yes i have had to replant those a couple of times what happened to them um, the leaves burn, and then they just die out. 
Well, I'm sorry to hear that, um, because there are a lot of people who've had great luck with Encore. One thing where azaleas are concerned, Mary, is they don't like the hot afternoon sun. Are you by any chance growing them in sunshine? Well, yes, um, it gets some, but it doesn't get the afternoon sun. It gets pretty much up until about 12 or 1 o'clock. Well, that should be fine. Azaleas can take that. But oftentimes, if they have the hot afternoon sun, then you'll get some burning and scorching. And that's when you get red spider mites and some of the other things, because the Pieris japonica, the azaleas, all of those types of plants usually will not be bothered by insects if they get dappled light or morning sun. It's the afternoon they don't like, okay? okay. The other thing I would look to is drainage. That is so incredibly important because azaleas do not like wet feet. And of course, I don't have enough time with the call-in questions to, to go into the soil prep and being very sure that you have good drainage. You have to be incredibly careful if you have a sprinkler system. A lot of people who have sprinkler systems in their lawns are killing their adjacent plants because it's too much water. So check that out, Mary, okay? Now, all that being said, if you work through those things and say that's not it, then uh, bring what you should do, and it may be too late now, is bring in at least some of the root system and let one of our plant people look at it and diagnose what they think. They can usually tell from looking at the roots if it was too much water or not enough water, okay? Okay, can I spray them with something? Uh, don't spray them with anything until you know what's going on. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see, our next caller is Doreen, and she's also calling from D.C. Hi, Doreen. Good Hi. morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm, I'm fine. I'm, my question is, um, I've had a, a holly bush in my yard for at least 19 years, and, and that was when we first moved in. But it was full grown when we first moved in, so I'm not sure how old it really is. Mm. But it's been doing fine every year, producing new leaves and just very little berry until I planted, um, you know, some new uh, holly bushes on the side. And then just last year, it was uh, full of berries. Good. Now this year, it's, it's brown. It's, the whole bush is totally brown. All the oh. leaves are brown. And I'm trying to figure out whether or not it's, it's, it's dead or if, uh, you know, maybe mildew mm. has covered it. I'm not really sure what's going on with it. Well, that, that doesn't sound good, okay? And for an established plant, a holly particularly, to just up and die is very unusual. It has had something going on around it to call that, cause that. Now, with a lot of the hollies, and we don't know which variety you're dealing with, there are a, a few that will, will have berries if there is no male plant nearby. But a lot of them do require the cross-pollination, okay? Right. So yeah. that accounts for the berries. Now, for the death of the plant, you've got to look deeply at what has happened because if that plant is totally brown and it has no green on it, no. then it doesn't sound like it's alive, okay? Ugh. So you, you're, you're going to have to face that. Now you can take your clippers out and clip some of those stems and see what they look like, but I have a feeling they're going to be brown and not alive. But do that before you panic too far, okay? Okay. What caused that? It can be a change in, in uh, the watering situation. Uh, it could be a, a use of chemicals, whether or not somebody has used um, uh, weed killers on the lawn and one day this one decided that it had too much of that, you know? And so it could be a number of different things. Right. Uh, have, have you or anyone used any weed killers near the root system of this plant? Uh, well, we did treat the grass last year, but the holly is the only thing that looks like it's been affected. Well, you know, this, that, I mean, the weeds are certainly prevailing. So. 
That's a possibility. Yeah. It's a very strong possibility because you've got a plant that was good for 19 years and now it's dead. Pro yeah. Probably dead, okay? Like I yeah. said, check it first. It can okay. very well be the chemicals. You have to be careful when you're using chemicals because right. a lot of those that are used on the lawn do go down into the system and can be picked up by other plants, okay? Oh. So I... I I hope it isn't dead, but I have a feeling it is. Oh, I'm sorry, Doreen. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much well, for the well, call. Thank you so much. I thank appreciate you. your help. Have a good day. You bye -bye. too. Bye-bye. Okay. We can take a quick break and come back with more of your calls. Hi, I'm David Yost from Maryfield Garden Center, and nothing beats the taste of fresh, homegrown herbs, vegetables, fruits, and berries. And whether it's a backyard orchard or growing herbs in a container, we have everything you need for your garden. And if you're new to gardening or new to growing edibles, our experts will be happy to coach you on a bountiful harvest. So come into Maryfield Garden Center today and let's get started. Do we get it? Got it. Yes. How do I make it stronger? When you've got Fios Quantum, you get America's fastest, most reliable internet. Hey, so where's the big project? Technology that makes you feel superhuman? Where do I sign it? That's powerful. Switch to Fios and we'll triple your speeds for free with an upgrade to Fios Quantum. Marvel's Iron Man 3 in theaters May 3rd. From sleek modern designs to American traditional, Direct Furniture is the discerning shopper's destination. We carry the brands that represent the finest in design and quality. Whether you're looking for the perfect mattress to lay your head upon or a cozy spot for a morning cup of coffee, our experienced interior designers can help you realize the elegance and style your home deserves. Haven't heard of us? Isn't it time you discovered us? Direct Furniture, 10390 Fairfax Boulevard in Fairfax and online at directfurnituregalleries.com. Houseplants add warmth and beauty to your home and office. And at Merrifield Garden Center, you'll find an incredible selection of gorgeous indoor plants to brighten every room. Our greenhouses are filled with lush tropicals, colorful varieties, and unique specimens. So visit Merrifield Garden Center today and discover the difference beautiful houseplants can make. We were, we've been playing during the break. I pulled out my smartphone. Peggy may not have a smart one, but my, I, I don't know if I'm mine smart either, but <laughs> we've been, we've been doing the barcode. Yes. It's very cool. It's got a great little video. Yes. Uh, turn, can it's you, like 27 seconds. Turn it up, Debbie. And you can I turned turn it, it off. Did you? Life is good when you can play with plants that work. <laughs> He's got a little video on there. See, it's very cool. fun. <laughs> and he tells you about that particular plant. Yep. Mm -hmm. what it, whether it likes sun or shade or how you use it. I think that's great fun. And, and they're all excited about it because this has just happened recently. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. great. That's great. <laughs> okay. Technology is wonderful. Okay, yes, we have another is. caller on the line. Phyllis is calling. And... Uh, Sorry to keep you waiting, Phyllis. How are you today? Well, thank you. I appreciate you taking my call. Sure. Um, I purchased a, um, a beautiful rhododendron last year, and, I, and it didn't survive. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, you know, expecting maybe it was because of the drainage was poor. I did mix superfine with clay, and I probably put some, you know, um, maybe garden soil in from... Um, one of the companies but is it possible that the drainage was the problem now the other thing truthfully is that the plant is on the fringe of the canopy um, from an oak tree and so I thought that that would give it enough shade but maybe it really was just too hot too much direct sun what do you well, think if it was afternoon sun they don't particularly like that but if you had gotten the the water the watering right and the drainage was right it probably certainly wouldn't have died that quickly it would have taken a slower time at the edges of um, deciduous trees large trees even is a perfect place for rhododendron they love that but you're saying that you've mixed all of these things the soil conditioners with your typical clay which we all have in this area 
you want to be sure that you're not preparing a bathtub with this kind of thing yeah. where the water runs to rather than from mm -hmm. you want to be sure with rhododendron that they do have excellent drainage there's two things with rhododendron they must have water okay but it needs to drain fairly quickly and then in the summertime if we have a drought then you need water mm -hmm. uh, because they may be too dry Right. Okay, so those are the two things. To be sure you've got enough water that drains in the one hand and in, during a period of drought, because they're shallow rooted plants, they may need some additional water. So in the future, if you plant another one there, be sure that you mound it, create a mound so that that water will drain away from it. And when you plant that root ball, plant it uh, well let's say almost a third that's at or just slightly above ground level so that it can get established and be particularly careful in that first year be sure that is thoroughly watered and watch it don't water it again until you check the soil and be sure that it needs that water but in the summertime then you must be sure that it has enough water. Okay? Right. Okay. So don't don't let one loss stop you. Okay. Try it again. Okay. And beyond Superfine, what kind of additives will be useful? It can be any organic uh, product. There's also a product called Leaf Grow, Leaf Grow, which is a wonderful product too, and that's composted leaves. Okay. But to just thoroughly thoroughly mix all of that with the soil and you can use both you know but be sure it's about one third of that and and if it's soil that doesn't drain terribly well don't be afraid to put in a bag of um, permatil okay that's the little tiny stones and help work that in so give that a try Phyllis and hope it works okay thank okay. you I appreciate thank you. Well, we, we have run out of time here, so I, my apologies to, to Tamara and Eileen. If you stay on the line, Diane can get your number and, and Peggy can give you a call back in a little bit. But uh, it just this hour goes by so fast. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you for Sun all these flies great when you're ideas. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, uh, David's going to be here, and he's going to be talking about proven performers, some of those tried and true plants. He, he actually, we've got some film footage where he went out and talked to some of the folks at the nursery and got their opinions. So. Be sure to be with us for that. Don't forget about the seminars today, uh, the seminar today on miniature gardens, and tomorrow be a successful gardener. So, right. So come on out and we see hope. these gorgeous plants. Absolutely. Oh, Have beautiful. a great week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>
in a world where Rachel can get personal TV show recommendations, where Hannah's internet flies unbelievably fast. At Cox Digital Telephone, saves me $10 every month. Oh, what is Tyler doing? Whoa, whoa, Dad. Oh, hey. yes. No. This, this is going viral. Get our new two-year price guarantee. It's our best offer ever. Starting as low as $89.99 a month, you get advanced TV, super fast internet, and home phone. Now with free pro installation. We now offer phone service as low as $1.70 a month with Magic Jack Plus. That's $19.95 a year. No computer needed. Nothing changes. And now keep your old phone number. That's right. Let's live a healthier lifestyle. Start your 60-day risk-free trial today. Call 1-800-205-9262. Your first month is just $19.95 and includes three five-gallon bottles, two free cases, plus use of a stainless steel dispenser. Call now. Things have gotten a little less hectic and a lot more healthy around here. Start your 60-day risk-free trial today. Call 1-800-205-9262. Your first month is just $19.95 and includes two free cases plus use of a stainless steel dispenser. Deer Park Direct, the water you love, delivered. Call now. We now offer phone service as low as $1.70 a month with Magic Jack Plus. That's $19.95 a year. No computer needed. Nothing changes. And now keep your old phone number. That's right. Keep your old phone number. Get Magic Jack Plus at Best Buy. What are you doing Mother's Day weekend? Do your part and race with us. Make mom proud. Join News Channel 8 Saturday, May 11th and register for the Susan G. Komen Global Race for the Cure in Washington. Make mom proud. So three sets of twins made for a busy morning at a hospital in Billings, Montana. These six babies were born within five hours of each other. Each other. The birth started at St. Vincent Hospital just before 8 o'clock Tuesday morning. And the last of the six babies uh, was born just after noon. Mercedes and Lexus Muzana came first. Then it was Leander and Aiden Gatlin. Jamie and Nathan Mertz weren't far behind hospital staff delivered each set of fraternal twins by C-section. Oh, not twins. Not twins. <laughs> Mercedes and Lexus. I like those names. I do. Wonder I, what inspired those. Yeah, I guess the parents <laughs> like driving nice cars. Exactly right. <laughs> so those were fraternal twins, right? Yeah. That's All right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk identical twins. All right. Today and tomorrow. All right. All right. If you like today, I think you're going to like tomorrow. Just take a little bit of the wind away. It's a great day. Get outside. It was just out in the last hour and it is beautiful out there. Why so? Because here in the Geico Weather Center, we can see on our storm scan that all of that rain is history. It is out to the east of the Washington area and that means clear skies, high pressure building in. Couple of our weather bug stations on this Saturday morning. Temperatures still in the low to mid 50s out there. The wind still gusting to 20 miles per hour. Look at this beautiful shot. You can see the sun glinting off the Potomac River. Just a great springtime shot and out there in Laurel at Laurel High School. Lots of blue sky out there. That's going to be the story for the rest of the day. Here's your forecast. How warm will it get? Yesterday we made it to almost 80. Today we're going to hover right around the 60 degree mark. So a real change in season. But look at the clarity of the air when you go outside. The mugginess is gone. Just a nice day to be out and about. Tomorrow, an identical twin, save for the winds. We're going to take away some of the gustiness. And tomorrow, temperatures may be about 58 degrees. Still, we'll call that pleasantly cool out there. Here you can see the dew points out there, the true measure of the moisture in the air only in the 20 degree range that is different by about 40 degrees from yesterday so yes open up those windows and uh you're going to notice the drop in the humidity. 79 yesterday, seasonal norm is 68 degrees. Here you can see how much rain we got in the last 48 hours. And Washington is usually at the bottom of the list. It's at the top right now, almost one and a half inches of rain recorded at the airport. Here you can see how chilly it is in the upper Midwest. And those temperatures are going to influence us for the next couple of days in Chicago, where they got five inches of rain yesterday. They got some snow. And because of the colder air, we've got frost watches and frost warnings out for people in the Ohio Valley. So a uh, little soon yet to put in your 
summer garden. Tonight, mostly clear, still breezy, quite chilly out there. Temperatures tonight in the 30s. Yes, the 30s. A reminder that it is not quite summer out there. Here's your future cast. Look at the clarity of the air as we go into the overnight hours and on into Sunday. And you're going to like Sunday an awful lot because we're going to take away some of those breezes. Temperatures in the upper 50s and uh, you know, the humidity this past week, some people said to me, is it here to stay? And uh, I'm happy to say, no, it's not. We're going to get a little bit of a break out there. And you're going to see in the seven day forecast here that uh, we're going to stay on the cool side after what was more like a summer like mm -hmm. week last week, Kathy. All right. Cool, but comfortable. We'll take it. I like that. All right, Dave. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Facebook, Twitter, and other social media have become such a huge part of our everyday lives, and that's been proven once again in Boston. It's played a role in everything from identifying the terror suspects, to learning about their lives, and helping keep the Boston area on lockdown. Raina Ninen has more on that side of the story. These photos released by the FBI went beyond viral. Try Internet Cataclysm, mobilizing an army of Internet users to action. The FBI website crashed from traffic overload by citizens eager to help. Some call it clicktivism, social media mobilizing citizens to act with a simple click. It began one minute after the blast. The news tweeted 1,000 times in a matter of minutes, leading to a flood of photos, videos, messages digital clues examining the smoke color of the blast to determine the explosives used. Two-thirds of Americans have smartphones. The majority of Americans are on Twitter and Facebook. People are going to find ways to contribute and to participate in situations like this. On 4chan, pictures of black backpack. You'd be surprised just how many people had black backpacks that day. Reddit.com had their own forum called Find Boston Bombers. At times, though, the crowdsourced investigations turned into a witch hunt when this missing student was wrongfully accused of being a suspect, as was 17-year-old Salah Barhoun, dubbed the Blue Robe Guy. Barhoun telling ABC News he feared for his life. It's like David and Goliath, except now there, there's an army of Davids out there. And what, what, we, what our institutions need to do is give slingshots to all those Davids. An army of Davids piecing together clues the FBI never told the public about. The suspected bomber's likely Twitter account. Apparently he didn't like haircuts. Or even the music he may have listened to. Digital details drawn together by people armed with nothing but an internet connection. And that now famous tweet by Boston police last night, suspect in custody, officers sweeping the area. It became the second most retweeted phrase, second only to President Obama's tweet on election night, four more years. Rena Nine and ABC News, Washington. The terror attack in Boston is not expected to deter thousands of runners from taking part in a big local race. More than 7,500 people will lace up and hit the streets of Alexandria for the George Washington Parkway Classic 10-miler on Sunday. Organizers of the GW Classic met with an array of law enforcement agencies this week. Their goal, to make the course as safe as possible. With that said, Sunday runners should prepare for beefed up security and some inconvenience. We'll have to do some sweeps of the buses. Um, our bag claim process is going to take a little bit longer because we'll have security there. Organizers say their goal is to allow runners to focus on the race and not potential threats. Tomorrow's race kicks off at 8 a.m. in Old Town, Alexandria. And also, here's a heads up for drivers in the district. Some streets are closed surrounding the World Bank this weekend as leaders from around the world gather for the spring meeting with the IMF and World Bank. The closures run until 7 p.m. on Sunday. You can find a full listing on our website, news8.net. Also, something else to keep in mind, Metro track work re resumes this weekend. Red Line trains are not running between Gallery Place and Union Station. Orange Line trains are not running between Virginia Square and Ballston. Shuttle bus service is being provided between those stations. Trains will also single track on the blue, yellow, and green lines. The work will take place until closing on Sunday. And we'll be right back with a look at what's in theaters this weekend. Stay with us. You're watching News Channel 8. Get your powder room remodeled in just one day. My Plumber will make over your powder room in one day, starting as low as $39 a month. Call us, we'll bring the showroom to you. Get a new look to your powder room from My Plumber in just one day. Call 8664 My Plumber.
These days, internet has become a necessity for people. And that's why I do my best to make sure their internet is reliable. During the storm, it was commonly known those who had Fios had a smooth ride. Immediately after the power came back on, I was able to video chat with my mom and reassure her that I was safe. My in-laws didn't have the internet when the power came back up. They're switching right now because of that reason. Fiber optics is more reliable because we actually run the fiber right to your house. No one else is going to beat that. When you need a network you can count on, you want Verizon Fios. Fios brings 100% fiber optic power right to your door. That's why it delivers America's fastest, most reliable internet. So switch to a more reliable network today with the Fios Triple Play Online for just $89.99 a month, and we'll triple your speed for free with an upgrade to Fios Quantum Internet. Plus, now get a multi-room DVR free for 12 months and $100 back with a two-year agreement. Don't miss this incredible deal. Visit verizon.com slash Fios today. Upgrading to Verizon Fios for America's fastest, most reliable internet? That's powerful. Introducing Rabbit TV. With this USB, you'll have access to over 5,000 internet TV stations. Over 5,000. That's right, just plug it in and turn any computer into the most incredible entertainment system ever. And as long as you have internet access, you'll have free internet TV. Watch as much as you want, anytime you want. There's no limit. Are you ready for this? It's just $10. You've heard right. $10. Order right now and we'll upgrade your order for free to Rabbit TV Plus. It not only has over 5,000 TV stations, it also has over 9,000 radio stations. Plus, if you call right now, you can double the order and get two for the incredible TV price of $10. Call now and find out about free shipping. Call 1 800 225 2996 and get your Rabbit TV or visit rabbittv.com. That's 1 800 225 2996. Get your powder room remodeled in just one day. My Plumber will make over your powder room in one day, starting as low as $39 a month. Call us, we'll bring the showroom to you. Get a new look to your powder room from My Plumber in just one day. Call 8664 My Plumber today. Well, Tom Cruise returns to the big screen with the action-packed thriller Oblivion. Arch Campbell lets us know if it's worth checking out at the box office this weekend. 60 years ago, Earth was attacked. We won the war, but they destroyed half the planet. Tom Cruise stays behind to clean up the mess on Earth in Oblivion. He works as a repairman who fixes broken drones. Those drones keep space aliens from coming back for another invasion, but then... Cruz uncovers a conspiracy with the aid of Rebellion King Morgan Freeman. You just repair drones. Don't go into the radiation zone. Don't ask too many questions. Oblivion looks great, but borrows heavily from a lot of better movies. The plot leaves you scratching your head, worth a couple of stars, PG-13. Not a good sign when people walk up saying, what was that? Jackie Robinson. Black man in white baseball. Best movie for the weekend, 42, the Jackie Robinson story avoids nostalgia, presents the frightening obstacles Robinson faced when he opened the big leagues to blacks after World War II. 42 belongs among the year's greats. It's a best bet, along with Starbuck and the place beyond the pines. For News Channel 8, I'm Arch Campbell. Well, the cherry blossoms are long gone, so not a bad idea to head to the movies this Absolutely, weekend. Absolutely, yeah. Oblivion. But, you know, when it's so nice outside like this, mm -hmm. we're almost oblivious, if I could say that, <laughs> to movies and going inside. You know, it's just great to be outside. Yeah. Nice day out there. Enjoy it. Lots of sunshine today, a little breezy.